Hi everyone, in this demonstration I'm going to show how to listen for Sentry webhooks and redirect them in a way that creates new GitHub issues every time we receive a new error. So for that I'm going to start by creating a new source that I'm going to call Sentry and I'm going to use a custom platform. Okay, next I need to register that webhook URL into my Sentry organization. So I'm going to copy this and go to uh, Sentry. And if I go in the settings and developer settings, you can see we have public integration or internal integrations. With public integration, we can set up webhooks, but we won't have a secret to verify the signature of Sentry. So instead, I'm going to create a new internal integration here that I'm going to call Octo demo and I'm going to paste my webhook URL here. Next, I'm going to want to listen to the issues webhook. That means I've got to mark issue and event as read and I click here and I click save changes. Now you can see I've got a client secret here, which I can copy and use in my workflow to verify the signature of my webhook. But before we do that, let's start raising an exception in our application so that we can see it on Octahook. So I've got a page here on my app, which is uh, like a random Sentry route, which is always going to throw an exception. So I'm going to hit that route. And when I go back to my Octahook source, we can see that new error as a webhook here. When I open that webhook, I can see many things. I can see the request that was received and the response that we sent back to Sentry. And if I had any destinations, they would be displayed here and you would be able to inspect their requests and responses as well. So let's have a look at what we received from Sentry. If I go into request and then body, you can see that we have a data object inside with issue. And we can see we have a nice title here, a runtime exception, test exception triggered, which would match whatever we have on our Sentry project here. So what I'd like to do now is to create a workflow that uses that title to create a new issue on GitHub. So let's do that. I'm going to go on to source and then manage workflow. We've now entered the workflow editor and down here you have your default workflow. Each node here has some inputs and or some outputs and they can be linked together like so. So by default, we have this webhook verifier which is just a boolean and if it is not valid then none of your destination will be triggered and your webhook will be marked as invalid. If it is valid however everything else will continue as expected. The webhook profile is useful to display some more valuable information in Octahook. So for example here you can see we have a webhook received and by default we use the user agent in the headers which is not very useful. Instead we could use the title of the issue as the title of the webhook here. And we can even have a subtitle underneath, which maybe we could use for something like the issue status, right? If it has been resolved or not. Okay, so let's start with those two. We will implement the webhook verifier and then the webhook profile for Sentry. Since those platform verifier and parser are not really working for us because they only have for now, segment GitHub and custom and they don't have Sentry. I'm just going to delete them. So I'm going to select those two and click delete. And now it is up to me to implement some nodes here that at the end define if the webhook is valid or not and at the end provides a title and a subtitle. Okay, so let's start with the webhook verifier. I'm just going to zoom out and move this over there. I'm going to use the incoming webhook, which gives you the data of the, the webhook that we received. So uh, in this case, I can click on this one to preview whatever my workflow will execute. And you can see here we have a Sentry hook signature, which we can use to determine if the webhook was really sent by Sentry or not. OK, so the first thing to do is create a new node, which will be a collection node, get data. OK, so let me move that across. And I will take the headers as the collection. And in the key, I am going to select whatever the key is of the header that gives me the signature. So if I go back here, I can see it's called Sentry Hook Signature. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here. 
And if I go and see the value, you can see that it is indeed what we want for that particular webhook selected. And just to keep things organized, I'm going to rename get data to get signature. Okay, next we need to compare that to a hash that we will compute ourselves. So to compare, we can go into add text, compare text, and I can link that value to the first text to compare. And the operation can be equal, or if you want it to be safer, it can be equal hashes. That means under the hood is going to use a more sophisticated function to compare the hashes in a way that is safe against timing attacks. So I'm going to rename this to compare hashes, and I'm going to link the result to the webhook verifier. So this is all good, but now we do need to implement our second text here. So we need to actually compute some hash that we can compare with the provided signature. In order to do this, we first need to provide the client secret in here. So for that, what you can do is in the script category, you can add a encrypted variable here. And that is used to safely store um, any sensitive variables that you might have. So first, we can go on to our developer settings, octahook demo. And right here was our client secret. So I'm going to copy this and paste it right here. And it goes without saying that these secrets will be revoked at the end of this demo. Okay, so now I'm going to rename this Sentry Client Secret. And we're going to use this to create a new hash. So for this, we go into Add Text and then right at the end, Hash Text. So every application has their own way of computing hashes, but for Sentry, what they do is they hash the row body. So I'm going to use this as the text and the secret as the hash secret, and they use SHA-256 as the algorithm. Okay, so now if I have a look at the value of the hash, we can see that it starts with 19FF. And if I have a look at the hash that we got in the signature, it also starts with 19FF. So it should be the same. So if I link it to the second value and then have a look of the result, then it is true. And just to double check, if I add, let's say, three Zs at the end here, then the value should be false, right? Because this should be a totally different hash, which is correct. So I'm just going to revert this and we should go back to true. And that's it. We have implemented our webhook signature verifier. Now doing all of this doesn't auto save. So I'm just going to scroll up and click save to make sure we're not losing any progress. Next, let's implement our webhook profile. So for this, I'm going to have to link it to incoming webhook data. So I can either link it directly there to whatever nodes I want, or I can make things a little bit cleaner and I can just duplicate it like this and just put it over there. Okay, so we said that for the title, we wanted the title of the issue and for the subtitle, its status. So if I go onto body, I can find the title through data issue title here and the status through status. So that should be as simple as creating some getter nodes to get that data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that get signature node, put it over there, link it with the body. And instead of having the key, which is the signature that we had before, I'm going to data.issue.title. And with any luck, if I go and see the value that was extracted for that particular webhook, it is exactly what we wanted. And I'm going to rename this get title. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the subtitle. So duplicate this, boom, body. The key will now be status. And I'm going to rename this get status. Okay, so now I can link these to the subtitle and to the title. And if I enter preview mode for my inputs, you can see we do have the expected result. Okay, so let's save again. And now let's move on to creating a destination node that will create a new issue on GitHub every time we receive a new exception. So I'm going to scroll down a bit, zoom out and move this over there. By the way, you can middle click to pan in the canvas 
or hit option and normal click uh, to pan as well. And you can use the, the middle scroll to zoom in and out. Okay, so I'm going to create a new node, output forwarding destination. And this is the node that I will use to actually create a GitHub issues. And you can see it has a lot of inputs that are available to you. So the first one is active, is a Boolean that will tell you if or not to actually send it. So if this resolves to false, then nothing will be sent. If it's resolved to true, then it will. You don't have to link it to anything. You can just turn it off and on using that button here. Next, we have the method, which can be either of these the URL that you will have to use to send your request and then any headers, body. If you don't have any body, you can actually use a raw body made of text if the body is not provided. Uh, so this can be useful, for example, if you want to directly send the, the raw data from the input to somewhere else without any modification. Okay, so first I'm going to rename this node create GitHub issue. And I'm going to create a new incoming webhook node so we can use it for filling the, the headers and the body. Okay, so let's see. The is active, I'm going to always set it to true. For the method, it's going to be post. And for the URL, I think we just need to have a look at the documentation now. So I've got the issue documentation, create an issue. And this is the URL that we need to use to post an issue on GitHub. So I'm going to copy this. The base URL is https api.github.com and this is the URL to use, except that we need to replace owner and repo with our actual repository link. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use a test repo that I've got here. So the owner will be my username and potential octotribal will be the name of the repo. So I'm going to copy this here and we've sorted the URL. Next for the headers, we need to provide some sort of authentication. So on my account, I went to my settings here under developer settings, personal access tokens, and I created a new personal access token for this demonstration here. So the way we can use this in our headers is we can do it right here. So we can write authorization, token, and then our token here. The trouble is I don't really want to put my token here because this will not be encrypted. Instead, I want to use the same trick as I did with the client secret of Sentry and use an encrypted variable. So I'm going to go here and create a new encrypted variable that I am going to call its uh, token. And I'm going to paste my token here. I've got this save on a snippet. Now I've got to write this key somehow here. The way you can do this using workflows is by using the fill template node. So you're going to collection, fill template, and you can enter any template and you give it some data and then you can use variable pass like this to access those variables within that template. So first, it looks like we're going to copy this into the template. And here we are going to write a value because this is exactly what will be provided if we link it with the data. So if I go into data and I preview it, you can see we've got an object uh, with only one item keyed by value. So this is useful for this particular case where all we want is to get the value of this in that template. So now if I go and have a look at the value, you can see we've got authorization token and our token has been actually pasted here. Now, if I go into the issues documentation, you can see that they recommend us to add this header in the accept header. So I'm going to copy this. And in the template, I can go back into my template and I can add some more value here. So I can say accept and then whatever they want us to use. Okay, so now I'm going to rename this node create headers and link it to the headers of our destination node. Now, all we need to do is the body. And for the body, we can see that we need a title and then we can provide a content for the issue, uh, some assignees and some labels. 
So what I'd like to do for this demonstration is use the title of the exception as a title for the issue. And for the body, we're going to use this to provide a markdown link so we can quickly jump back into the century exception from the GitHub issue. And labels, I'm going to use this to automatically mark this as a bug because if it comes from century, it is usually a bug. So back to Octahook, I am going to create a new template node and link it to our body. And I'm going to rename this create body. And I'm going to provide the body of the webhook as the data. Now I can create my own payload. So I can say title. And let's prefix this with century. So we know it was automatically created. And we will use the variable at data.issue.title, if I remember correctly. So we can check that by going into the value of our node. And you can see, yeah, this is exactly what we want. Then we can provide some body for our issue. And this will just be some simple markdown for the text. So we'll just do this C and century. And for the URL of the century, what they do here. So if I click on this exception, we can see that we can access the issues page with that URL by replacing the number at the end with the ID of the issue. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste this and replace that particular ID with data dot issue dot id and if i go into value and i open this you can see that it is the case and finally on the template i am going to add another variable called labels and it will simply be an array containing the keyword bug and this should be enough to associate a bug label to our issue okay so now if i go into my destination node i'm preview mode Let's have a look at everything. So is active is true. The method is post. The URL is the URL of our repo. The headers are using our authentication token. The body is using data from Sentry. Uh, and the row body is null because we use either one or the other. OK, so now let's save our workflow. And let's create a new exception. Because we're listening to what Sentry called issues and not errors, we will receive this webhook only once per type of exception received. So for this to work, I'm just going to need to go back into my issues on Sentry and delete that one. OK, so now if I go into the page that always generates an exception, refresh this, and I go back to Octahook, I can even go back to my source page. And there it is, our new webhook. You can see that the title and the subtitle has been set properly. I can click on it and I can see that it has successfully been forwarded to GitHub. So if I click here on my destination, I can see what we sent and what we got um, from GitHub. So on the request, you can see the, the request that we built using the workflow. Uh, and on the response, you can actually see the issue that was created. And if you wanted to debug what happened during the workflow when receiving the webhook, you can go into the workflow tab. This is just a read-only version of the workflow manager that we saw before. So you can't add any node or anything like this, but you can actually click on all of them and see what was sent um, and debug exactly every single node, even after a webhook was received. And this data is always going to be attached to your webhook. That means if you change the workflow in the future, this read-only workflow will still stay the same. It's the workflow at the time of you receiving the webhook. One last thing to check is if an issue was actually created on GitHub. So if I go into my test repository uh, under issues, you can now see that we do have a new issue labeled bug. And if I click on it, sure enough, I have a link CN Sentry. And if I click on that link, I get redirected to the Sentry exception. So that's it for this demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can see the huge potential that Workflow has for integrating APIs together in real time. And yeah, let us know what you think. Thank you.